Sanct <laughs> Sorry, I was doing the thumbnail. Um, hi, how are you? Um, today, I have a movie review for you, and it's for the movie Bakabukas. I was supposed to see Smaller and Smaller Circles today, but that didn't come into fruition because of reasons. I don't have to tell you. You don't know my life. You don't pour my cereal. When I took down notes for that movie, no, please, go ahead. I need the noise. I love the background noise of a motorcycle. It's the most pleasing sound next to, like, a baby crying. Anywho's, I have all of these thoughts, so I thought that I would split this video into two parts. We're gonna do the non-spoiler review first, and then we're gonna head on over to a more spoiler review. Spoilery review. Don't worry, there'll be a fair warning. I I'll, I'll flash, like, Breasts. No, I don't want to be misconstrued. I don't want people to think that I'm uppity or above anyone. So I just want to guys. I want to guys. I do want guys. That's true. Freudian slip. I want you guys to know that I am not in any way a film major. I don't have a heavy background or rich knowledge or catalog of film. I love watching movies and I love talking about them. I do it all the time in my spare time, so I thought since I have editing software, a camera, a microphone. I woke up one day and I just thought, you know what? The whole world needs to hear this. The whole world. So yeah, just please bear that in mind. Everything that I'm going to be saying in these movie reviews are my opinion. Baja Bucas is an independent film that was released in 2016. It is written co-produced and directed by first-time director Samantha Lee, and it stars Jasmine Curtis-Smith and Luis de los Reyes. This was released in Cinema One Originals 2016 and was pretty much a hit. Uh, Jasmine Curtis-Smith won an award for Best Actress uh, for this in the Audience Choice Award, and I think they also took home the award for Best Sound. Brief overview of the plot, uh, we follow our protagonist, Alex, uh, played by Curtis Smith. We meet Alex at a time in her life where she is out to everyone else in her life except for her best friend, Jess. And the movie kind of details what happens when you, as a lesbian, fall in love with your straight best friend. Sounds new to me, never heard of it. And I'm sure every other LGBTQ person watching this video right now cannot relate to that. I'm sorry, Thor, were you saying something? Yeah, fuck you too, man. Right off the bat, one of the things that I listed down here, and I know probably why, it's because it's the first thing I noticed, is that this movie is very exposition heavy. And now I know that in my last video, um, I, when I talked about The Handmaiden, which also was pretty exposition heavy, I said in that video that having exposition move the plot along and being dependent on that is not a great fault and is something very forgivable, in my opinion at least. I take that back. <laughs> this movie is visually, it's very pleasing. Um, it makes use of a lot of muted pastel colors and um, it's just very soft all around. I do like the fact that Alex is pretty much out to everyone in her life. Unfortunately, unfortunately, because I said it twice, you know that it's, it's very unfortunate. There was no chemistry between the actors. The performances in general kind of it left a lot to be desired. You know, in movies like this where there's not a lot of um, visual effects or uh, a very complicated plot, it, I think it's such a mortal sin that Baha Bukas has committed to write a story about two girls in love and have that as a central plot and then hire actors that have no chemistry whatsoever. I didn't look into this movie. I don't know if they did a chemistry test. I don't even know if a chemistry test is standard or if rehearsals are standard. But whatever measures that could have been taken into making sure that these two had chemistry prior to production, I would have take I would have taken them. The relevance of the characters as well. Like there were so many characters in this movie that I thought were unnecessary. Dialogue was so mismatched as well. It just wasn't, it didn't flow naturally. The characters seemed so forced, not only in delivering the lines, but even in like spending time together and doing these scenes. It just, it just didn't feel right. And I really don't mean any shade on Jasmine Curtis Smith. I have not seen any of her past movies. Uh, also, that's something that I probably should have mentioned in the beginning is that I'm not well versed in local Filipino media. I've seen maybe 
a handful of local films. I've liked some of them. I, I admit that fully. And and maybe it is a question of taste. Uh, Jess, she plays the best friend of Alex and the one that is the apple of Alex's eye and has been for, I don't know, quite some time. Also time, can I just very briefly brush on this? The way in which they would portray time and how much time has gone by between one scene and another is so fucking strange and confusing because it's it's just, it's either a bunch of montages and that's it. It's a bunch of montages. Luis de los Reyes, she did a fantastic job in playing Jess, who by the way, really is the only character in this movie that had some sort of depth. I'm not a very, <laughs> you'll realize this if you decide to still stick with me and follow me and uh, subscribe. I don't really do, what is it called? Research? And you're very free to fight me on these uh, facts. But I don't know if Luis de los Reyes has gotten enough recognition for uh, her role here. Maybe she's done other roles that quickly overshadow this one. I really wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And overall, it just dragged. When, when, by the time that the, um, the film was over and I saw that it was just an hour and 21 minutes, nine minutes short of a standard 90 minute film, I was surprised. I was like, oh my God, that wasn't two hours? I think that's all that I can say for the non-spoiler review. So if you guys don't plan on getting spoiled for this movie or if you haven't seen it yet, uh, feel free to come out. <laughs> Click come out. I mean, don't, no, don't. I mean, feel free to do it, but I'm not forcing you to do it. Come out at your own time, at your own pace when you're ready and in a safe space and hopefully sober. But I mean, feel free to click out of this video uh, because we're about to get into the spoiler review. Flashing dress, just kidding. I'm gonna give you some time. You can go ahead and leave the video and I'll just struggle to open this. Non-sponsored. The opening of this movie is, surprise, surprise, a montage. And they also mention the names of other characters that we will soon meet in the movie. That would be Julo and uh, a girl named Kate and a hot guy that I forgot the name of. David? No. I think all hot guys' names are David. The reason why I mentioned this, also, by the way, just so you guys know, a lot of these scenes that I'm about to mention and thoughts are just going to be ramblings and completely jumbled, not in chronological order. Get ready for the roller coaster ride. Now, the, men the mention, I have dementia. The reason why I mentioned that first scene is because it plays very much into my confusion uh, during the time that Alex and Jess have a confrontation in the restaurant and, and Jess is just flabbergasted as fuck. Also, she said the word tangina, so you know it's serious. I don't understand why Jess is so offended by this. Like, it never occurred to her that Alex could still have secrets when the montage that we see at the beginning of the movie doesn't detail them from childhood to them growing up. Not that I'm saying that the only worthy friends that you can have are friends that you grew up with, but they look exactly the same. You know, there's no change in age. There's no telling how much time they were actually friends. This is what I'm talking about, about how they don't portray time. And there's no even casual mention of it, which is ironic in a movie that is just so exposition heavy. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm screaming. And it's, what time is it? Oh my god, it's midnight. I wrote here the Filipina tiger mom. That's so, yes. I love the Filipina tiger mom. I know I mentioned her earlier too. I like the fact that she's treated just as any Filipina tiger mom or Asian tiger mom would treat their child regardless of their sexuality. Their mom's like, okay, you're gay. I don't care. You're still a fuck up. One thing I don't understand though is why she was faceless for the bulk of the movie and then we see her for maybe like seven seconds by the end strange i have some notes here about jess but we'll get into that maybe later on uh because i want to talk into the relevant points that the movie barely scratches the surface of uh it's mostly focused on like how the community is viewed which is 
significantly skewed for the most part. Uh, they also touch on Filipino media, local media, and how there is a lack of representation. Um, so they go about these things because Alex is trying to pitch a show. What is her job anyway? I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid. Anyway, she's trying to pitch this show and the producers are not for it. They're not feeling it. They're like, mm, she gay. We don't like that. We just want straight up dick vagine. I thought that there would be some success to her getting this show done. We never get to see this show come into fruition or movie. I'm not sure what Alex is trying to pitch, but it's some sort of drama gayness that I was maybe sort of interested in. But no, up until the end of the movie... This show never happens. And then Alex is getting drunk somewhere and making out with guys. So there's a subplot that goes on throughout the movie. A romantic subplot between Julo and Hot Guy. Angelo? What's his name? So there's that happening, which is kind of like maybe a parallel to the central plot point. I don't understand how that pushes the plot forward. I don't, don't see how Julo has ever helped in... Uh, the character development of Alex. I mean, I can't see any relevance to his character apart from being a bitch to Jess, which by the way, very entertaining. And just being a just being a comic relief and being the typical male gay best friend accessory. I went back and tried to think about the, the scene in which Alex and Kate we're, we're rewinding back now there was a scene where Alex and Kate we catch Alex say something like oh Kate you're leaving by the end of this month and then you know Jess Cock blocks her as straight best, best friends do and during that time Alex and Jess hadn't gotten together yet right so fast forward so they started dating and in order for us to understand that you know they, they dated for a little bit is through a what's the word kids fucking montage that's a fucking word so we got a montage of you know more edgy stuff now a lot of like mm, 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 a lot of kissing or non-kissing also something that i want to touch on later in the video so by the time that the montage ends uh and by the time that alex and jess finally go out in public and takes her to an art show an art show literally one of the gayest places that you could never mind that you would take your girlfriend to okay i had to complete that sentence she introduces alex as her best friend and this pisses alex the fuck off alex walks out just goes after her she's like what's wrong babe and <clears throat> alex is like i don't like being a secret anymore i can't take this i've had it and so I'm like, well, good for you, Alex. Good for you for standing up for yourself and for not letting yourself be blinded by, you know, by by all of the, the fancy, fairy, gay flurry of being with someone that you've been pining after. Then they must have been dating for, I don't know, I would say at least three months. Enough for, for Alex to think that, you know, it's time, bitch. I know that you're a newly gay but it's time for you to make up your mind. Yes, Alex's uh, disposition is difficult because she's always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Jess is also dealing with her own shit. There's also the internal turmoil of figuring out that you are not the person that you thought you were. Sexuality can be as complicated and confusing as it is fluid. But then we're back to the scene where they kind of sort of are about to break up i think she's having dinner with kate or helping her pack either way the point is that it has only been less than a month that entire montage that had led up to their supposed breakup was less than a month god alex cut your best friend some slack she is discovering who she is and she's coming from a background of absolute zero knowledge on how to how to deal with herself if it's not being seen through the eyes of others and now we're going to get into jess too the reason why i find her character to be the one with the most depth and the one that's most three-dimensional is because she's the actually the one that has sort of expressed some sort of inner turmoil she's dealing with her sexuality she's dealing with you know her career she's dealing with the insecurities on top of that on top of all of this she has a best friend that's trying to pressure her into coming out and stapling stapling and setting in stone her sexuality and all of that in less than a month remember this one scene where the movie producers the homophobic ones <laughs> the term that they use was momol too much momol could cheapen 
uh, a movie. So they were suggesting certain strategic ways to make it look like the two girls are kissing, but actually they're just touching face. Like, create the illusion of romance. Fucking artifice that shit. And Alex says, I don't think that's a good idea because it sends the wrong message. Count how many times... There was Momol <laughs> for Alex and Jess. No need to do that. I already did it for you. There are two times. There are two instances. And one of them was the only legitimate one. I just think it's really funny how this film does its best to touch upon these relevant points. But it also is a victim to all of the stereotypes and the tropes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just saw something in my notes. And I remembered that scene. The singing in the tub. Never do that again. Oh, 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 here, here we go. The first sign of conflict I wrote here is 49 minutes into the movie. There's a first sign of conflict. And it's represented by some weird random guy that we had never seen before in the in the entire movie. There's no introduction of who this guy is. He just randomly walks on set. Hey Jess, what's up? I don't think you should be gay. What? Who is this dude? So Alex said a line in the movie to Jess. You are the straightest straight girl I know. Do you want Jess to announce it to the world? You want her to come out to all of her fans, to her family, to her friends, when she can't even really figure it out for herself? All she knows is that she likes you and, and she's happy when she's with you. But you want to muddle all of that up. Oh, I made a note here. At the 1 hour 13-ish mark, there's a shot of Alex in bed. Again, another montage. And it reminded me of a, of a bed montage scene from Like Crazy. I just took note of that and I wanted to mention it. How long is this video now? Oh my God, this video is an hour. There's a line that was said twice at the beginning and near the end of the movie. And that line is, we were never really just friends. First of all, Alex, yes, you were. No matter how strong or passionately you feel about another person and how you're the only one right for them, if they don't know or they don't feel the same way, then you are just friends. Being in love with someone doesn't entitle you to them sadly <laughs> so yeah here are my overall th thoughts my thoughts is that it is lacking in writing performances and i stopped writing because my hand was hurting as muted as the colors in the cinematography so was the romance i do have a couple of pros though that i would like to mention so that would be the cinematography some scenes were kind of funny i think there were a couple of them that had me going Another pro is Jess. Again, I like that character just in comparison to all of the people that she starred alongside. Pretty much like, you know, she had an arc and development. So I'm planning on seeing Too Cool to be Forgotten. If you guys want to see a movie review on that, feel free to comment on this video. Like so that I know you liked it. And if you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to subscribe. It's free. It's whatever. Thank you so much for watching up until this point. If you did, my name is Noah. And I hope that this video doesn't have a lot of background noise. Do you like it when I hold the mic like this or does it feel like I'm about to deep throat a dildo? Be honest, be honest. No, actually, second thought, no, don't be honest. Just tell me, no, my God.